That in the time of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, in the time of Jesus, he was traveling with some of his companions. So then they reached an area, bro, and they had the munchies. So they got hungry. And Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam, he collected whatever money they had. After collecting the money, he chose one of the companions. He says to him, look, you take this money, go into the town and buy us some food. We're hungry. So the man says, yeah, all right, that's no problem. Takes the money, goes into the town. When he goes into the town, he realizes that all the money could buy was what? Three loaves of bread. That's all he could buy. And there must have been about 10 blokes back there waiting to eat. So he's looking at the bread, he's thinking, but if I take this back, how much am I going to possibly eat? So what does he do? He eats one then and there and goes back to Jesus with only two loaves of bread. When he goes back to Jesus and he gives him the two loaves of bread, Jesus looks at the bread, alayhi salatu wasalam, looks at the man and he says to him, who ate the third loaf? He's thinking, when I ate the third one, I was alone, there was no one there. So now Jesus is asking about the third, so what does he do? He says, bro, wallah, he says, I only bought two. So Jesus doesn't argue with the man, you know. They carry on their journey, then they reach a destination. The companions that were successful in hunting the deer, they cooked it, they ate it, until there was nothing left, bones, just a carcass. And then Jesus calls the man over. He sits him down, he says to him, look. And then by the will of Allah Azza wa Jal, a miracle through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Jesus gives life to the animal in front of the man's very eyes. Imagine, there's just bones, and it comes back to life in front of their eyes, and it runs away. So Jesus says to the man, I'm asking you by the one that gave life to this animal. Bro, who ate that third loaf of bread, man? If the guy wasn't feeling pressure before, now he's thinking, Ya Allah. He's thinking, cuz, I swear I only bought two. You know, sometimes my brothers, we make a mistake in life. And you could have corrected that when you first made the mistake. But because of a lie, because we were put into a corner, we make the situation worse on ourselves. Now look how deep he's falling. Anyway, Jesus doesn't argue with the man, they continue on. They eventually reach a river, the river was over flooded. There was no boats to cross the river and they had to get to the other side. So Jesus, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he, he gathers the companions and by the will of Allah azza wa jal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows them to walk on the surface of the water. All of them, imagine all of them as a group. They walk on the surface of the water and then they cross the river and get to the other side. And then Jesus calls the man over. He says to him, I'm asking you by the one that allowed us to walk on the water, man. Who ate that third loaf of bread? Now, now the man's feeling the heat, bro. He says, honestly, there was only two. They carried on until they reached their final destination. Jesus calls the man over. They sit down on the floor. And Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he gathers together three piles of dirt. Imagine. Imagine you're this man. He puts together three piles of dirt. He sits the brother down. And by the will of Allah azza wa jal, he turns the dirt into gold. Then he says to the man, he says, look, I'll tell you what. He says, one pile is for you. One pile is for me. And the third is for the one that ate that third loaf of bread. The guy, but eat al Quran, I ate the bread. <laughs> he sees the third loaf. He says, I ate the bread. Allahu Akbar, now there's papers involved, there's gold. So the man, when he sees dunya, he sees gold. He says, bro, I ate the third loaf. Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he says, look, for you, you have all three piles, but you can't join us anymore, man. What does the man say? He says, go, bro, go, look at this fortune that I now have, man. He's thinking, Allahu Akbar, what do I buy first, bro? Is it the, he didn't know what he's going to buy first. So he's sitting there, he's looking at the gold, he's admiring it. Isa and his companions take off. Shortly after, three thieves come by. When they see the man and three piles of gold, 
the maths is pretty straightforward, bro. First thing they did is they knocked him off straight away. Three thieves, three piles of gold, halawa. But they too were hungry, man. So one of them says, look, I'll take some money, I'll go to the town, I'll buy some food, we'll have a feed, and then everyone takes his pile of gold and we call it a day. He goes to the town, my brothers, and on the way he starts thinking to himself, you know. He's thinking, how can I get that money, man? And while he's over there buying the food, the two that stayed behind are thinking, how can we take his money? So they planned and plotted, and he planned and plotted. They said when he returns, we'll kill him. And we'll split his share in half. When the man reaches the town, he buys the food, he says, bro, 100% they're going to do something to me. So what does he do? He poisons their food. He comes back with the food before he could do anything. They knocked him off straight away. As he knew, as he planned. <coughs> well, they sat down, they had a feed, <laughs> and little did they know the what? The food was poisoned. Wallahi, shortly after they also died. Now Isa alayhi salatu wasalam and his companions, they're walking back. They seen their former companion, the three thieves, and the three piles of gold sitting there untouched. So Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he looks over to his companions and he says to them, this is hayat al-dunya. He says, this is the life of this world. And this is what it does for the one who runs after it, man. That's dunya, my brothers and sisters. Wallahi, you can run and run and gather and collect as much as you want. You're leaving and you're leaving everything behind. You know what? Wallahi, you're leaving everything behind. And my brothers, honestly, how many of us, we've sold our deen for a very small price. And some of you think, nah, cuz me, I'm a soldier. I'm a, I'm a soldier. Wallahi, my brothers, the tricks of shaitan are far greater than us. When I was in the UK, one of the mashayikh there, he was sharing his story with us. And I heard it personally, Yani. It's a very famous story. Just to give you an example, one of the mashayikh there, he says, I was hired by one of the masajid as an imam. He says, I was hired as, as an imam by one of the mosques. He says, and I was new to the area. He says I was the Imam, and I used to take the bus from my house to the town, to, to, to that area, and then I would walk to the masjid, it wasn't far from there. And he says because I was the Imam, when I would go to the masjid, yani he went in his abaya and the amama and the whole, and the whole shebang. He says so I would take this bus. He says one day I jumped on the bus, and and uh, it was a new bus driver, so it wasn't someone that, that he had seen. He says, I jump on the bus, I paid him for my fare, and he gave me the change. He says, when he gave me the change, I didn't really look at what he gave me until I went back to the back of the bus, I sat down. He says, when I sat down, I looked at the money and I realized he gave me 20 pence. In the UK, 20 pence, yeah, I mean, we're talking nothing, but cents, like 10, 10 cents at most. He says, so you know, like I sat there and I said, man, the guy gave me more. He said, and then the conversation started happening in my head. And honestly, how many times have you been in this position? Allah, he's thinking, you know what? It's 20 pence. It's nothing, bro. Don't worry about it. Madbah del halak, you know what I mean? Don't embarrass yourself. They're a big company anyway, bro. And really, what's 20 cents going to do, eh? So the man's sitting there and he's thinking, bro, it's 20 cents. Should I? Shouldn't I? Should I? Shouldn't I? He says, and Wallahi, for the whole trip, this is the conversation that's happening. He says, you know, like it wasn't about the money, it was just... And then the Sheikh was saying, he was saying, when I got to my bus stop, he said, when I got to my destination, he said, I got off my chair, I'm walking down the bus, I'm walking to the front door. He says, Wallahi, and I'm still saying to myself, do I give it, then I give it? He says, and then as soon as I got to the bus driver, he said, I don't know what went into me, man. He said, when I turned over to the bus driver, I said to him, look, man, you gave me 20 extra. He goes, no, I didn't give you 20 extra. He goes, I gave it to you intentionally. He says, why did you give it to me intentionally? He goes, well, for three years I've been looking into Islam. And he said, when I came and I seen you dressed the way you were dressed, I knew that you were an Imam. 
He said, so today I was going to make my decision. If you were honest, if you were honest, I was going to embrace Islam. But if you kept that money, I, he said, I knew that you were liars like everyone else lies. So now the Shaykh is speaking about himself. He says, I gave him the money. He says, I got off the bus. He says, when the bus drove off, he says, I started crying. He said to me, I almost sold my deen for 20 cents, bro. 